helicopters across to the island of Montserrat. Hi, I'm here with Mark Fleming, who is the CEO of Calvin Air Helicopters. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. So can you tell me a little bit, a bit about your helicopter? Sure, so this is a, a state-of-the-art Airbus EC-130 helicopter, they call it. Uh, it's a very, uh, very high-end aircraft, VIP equipped. Unlike traditional helicopters, this machine has a lot more room, almost three feet wider than older helicopters. And the key feature here, as you can see, this is the theater style seating. So you actually sit up higher than everybody else in the front. So you see in front of them, and there's so much room between the seats. It's just a spectacular viewing throughout. So what tools do you do on the helicopter? Sure, well, our most popular tour is the Montserrat Volcano Tour. It's a 45 minute long tour. We go over across the turquoise water looking for sea life, turtles and whales, and then you actually become upon a very active volcano um, that's constantly, uh, constantly venting. And you get to go down to the former capital city of Plymouth to see all the destruction there. Wow. And so is it safe to go over, obviously, a volcano? Yes, it's very safe. We take quite a distance uh, from the volcano. As well, we fly the scientists around once a week, so we're always in constant communication with them with uh, what levels, uh, uh, with how active it is at all times. And Upon takeoff, we head over Darkwood Beach and down the west coast of Antigua before making the 30 mile trip to Montserrat. On the way over, we look for whales and Mark tells us a little of the history of the island and the volcano. The island of Montserrat is approximately 10 miles long by 7 miles wide, similar in size to Antigua. We approach Montserrat from the northeast over Spanish Point, heading for the Sufra Hills volcano. From this point, you begin to see the destruction caused by the volcano, with huge swathes of the hillside stripped bare in contrast to the green hills to the north of the island. In 1995, the volcano had a height of 3,000 feet. Now, it is 400 feet higher due to the creation of a lava dome. On the 18th of July, 1995, the dormant volcano in the southern part of the island became active. A month after the first visible activity was noticed, the first major eruption took place in August 1995, which covered the nearby town of Plymouth, the capital of the island, in a thick layer of volcanic ash. Plymouth and the whole southern part of the island was evacuated and more than half of the population abandoned the island to live elsewhere in the world. Two years later, there was a huge eruption, causing pyroclastic flows to destroy most of Plymouth and the airport. An exclusion zone encompassing the southern half of the island was imposed because of the size of the existing volcanic dome and the resulting potential for pyroclastic activity. It was only when we are flying directly over buildings that we really managed to get an idea of the scale and power of the volcano. Hundreds of buildings and homes were abandoned within a matter of days due to the risk posed by the volcano and the potential of pyroclastic flows. A pyroclastic flow is a fast moving current of hot gas, dust and rock that flows along the ground away from a volcano at an average speed of about 60 miles an hour. It is however capable of reaching speeds of up to 400 miles an hour and the gases and rocks can reach temperatures of up to 1000 degrees centigrade. Along with the abandoned buildings, what you notice are huge cuts and slices into the hillside. These huge gullies 
don't appear to be very big until you get close up. On the second time round, Mark flew closer and lower, allowing us to almost fly down the gully, giving us an idea of the scale of the amount of rock and matter that had been ripped out of the earth by the volcano. The only activity permitted in the exclusion zone is the cement factory, where you will regularly see bulldozers going in and out, taking the ash to make cement. Before 1995, the island was a popular holiday destination and was home to the legendary Air Studio, owned by George Martin, the producer of The Beatles. More than 70 albums were recorded, with stars such as Dire Straits, The Police, Elton John, The Rolling Stones, Duran Duran, Ultravox, Lou Reed, Black Sabbath and Eric Clapton, all having recorded albums at the Montserrat studio. Upon our return, we flew back over Spanish Point, flying lower to see the pyroclastic flows, the boulders and rocks that had been ejected from the volcano, and the ash, which gets washed into the sea on a daily basis. On our flight back to Antigua, we continued looking for whales. Humpback whales are often seen between the two islands. We then took a short trip down the coast and over Cades Reef to see it from the air. 